our last day here in New York and Gemma has sent me back uptown to Levan Bakery to get her one last cookie before we go home. And it's such a shame that you can only get these in New York because they are absolutely amazing. So I thought that maybe when we get back to London we could get the C&T gang together, put our heads together and kind of come up with our take on the Levan cookie. Welcome back to Crumbs and Doilies. Now, Gemma is still off, I'm afraid. She's at home resting up. Thank you for all your messages. They're really cheering her up and hopefully she'll be back with you guys soon. But Dane and I are here on our day off at the bakery because we are both craving those Levan style cookies from New York. And so we have been here all morning experimenting with all different types of recipes to come up with what we think is the best replica. And we're gonna share that with you, but why don't you come over here and see what we've been up to this morning. Now, like I said, we have been up for hours coming up with hopefully what we've perfected the Levan style cookie. We are looking for a really chewy, soft centre and the chocolate chips are kind of melted inside. It's a little bit half baked and that is exactly how the cookies were from Levan. Yeah, and my favourite bit was that the outside was still kind of crispy, but then the inside was, like Jane said, kind of half baked and gooey and delicious. It's not been as easy as we thought. Like, no. they've all come up pretty <laughs> differently. I mean, if we look at this one, for example. This looks just like a I mean, it's still delicious, but yeah, it, it's huge. That's not what they look like in New York. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if we break it open, you can see it's just kind of, I mean, it's just too thin. Yeah. Um, so that one is out the window, I'm afraid. And then yes. this one here. This one is kind of the shape that we want. So it's nice and thick. Mm. Um, but when we break it open, it's really, so the chocolate chips are kind of melted. But when you eat it, the texture is a little bit cakey. Um, and it's not that kind of half-baked gooiness that we want. So we've kind of come up with, this one was the closest we got to it and um, it's nice and light in colour, it's gooey on the inside, it's got a nice crispy shell and there's a few tweaks we've made to it and now we think we've got it. So why don't you come with us and we're going to show you our recipe. <laughs> So first I'm going to talk to you about our kind of additions and we're going to do the walnut and milk chocolate version of the cookie. We found that walnuts have a really strong bitter taste and actually when we were eating the Levan cookies you couldn't really taste the walnuts, it was more adding a buttery crunchy texture to it. So we need to get the skins off these walnuts and that can be really kind of faffy because they're kind of funny shapes and the skin's all over them and it takes a long time to do it by hand. So what I've done is I've popped a whole tray of walnuts in the oven for about five minutes and I'm now going to put them into a tea towel and rub off the skin. So what I'm doing is just kind of rubbing the nuts between each other and the tea towel and that is just going to help pull off the skin. As you can see when we open it, now this nut has got completely skinned, which is exactly how we want it. So we're going to use 100 grams of these nice skinned walnuts along with 400 grams of milk chocolate. You can use whatever chocolate you like, but because it's a lot of chocolate, dark chocolate can be pretty overpowering at the best of times, and 400 grams of it is going to be like intense. So that's why we're going for 400 grams of milk chocolate. Okay, so now it's time to start making our cookie dough. Yes, so we've got 230 grams of cold butter, and it's really important for this recipe that the butter is super cold, and um, it'll affect the overall texture of the end cookie. So it's going into our bowl. And then we're just gonna, yeah, put this on the mixer, and we're just gonna break it up a little bit for maybe like 30 seconds, because like Din said, we don't wanna overbeat this. What do you think? Yeah, I feel that it's good. It's kind of broken up a little bit, but it's um, not super creamed. Yes. Just what we don't Okay, cool. Yeah. So next we're going to add... And so we've got two types of sugar. We've got caster sugar and soft light brown sugar, 160 grams of each. So they're cool. going straight into the bowl. And that's going to go back on for about kind of 30 to 45 seconds. Yeah, so in the bowl you'll see that the sugar and the butter have kind of formed like little nuggets, which is kind of what we want. So this is where everything goes a little bit strange. <laughs> because normally at this stage of making cookies or cakes or something, you'd add your eggs, but we're not going to do that because we don't want to bind anything. We don't want to whip anything. So we're going to go in with our chocolate and our walnuts. Yeah. And I think it would be fair to say at this stage, you could, if you don't have a stand mixer like this one, you can just do it by hand because we're not trying to whip anything or cream anything. We just literally want to combine them together.
Okay, so that's just combined again to bring it all together, not to whip anything. And now we're going to put our dry ingredients in. Yeah, so in this bowl, I've got 200 grams of self raising flour, 300 grams of plain flour, a quarter teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda, and two teaspoons of baking powder. If you didn't catch all that, <laughs> all the ingredients are in the description box below. <laughs> <laughs> Right, okay, I caught it, just. And <laughs> uh, we're going to tip all of that in again, just combine it. So that's had only, again, about 30 seconds. Yeah, and if you come a little bit closer, <laughs> you can see that this is just like really fine powdery breadcrumbs, and that is exactly what we want. And then once we add the egg, into it, it'll kind of bring it together and combine it a little bit to give that chewy, dense, not too cakey or crummy texture that we're really looking for. Okay, so we've got two large eggs in here. Oh my goodness, I spilled it. <laughs> and we've already whisked it up because we really don't want to beat this for long at all. So we've already done part of the job by whisking it together and we're gonna dump all of this into the mixture, turn it on and combine it all. Okay, that is the cookie dough made, and we just mixed it until it all kind of came together as one big dough. Yeah, and it's kind of cleaned the sides of the bowl because it's a really thick paste, it's not quite, it's not really wet. And we're going to weigh out our cookies so that they're all nice and even, and we're going to go for 125 grams. We tried all sorts of different sizes, yeah. um, and 125 seems like a good quantity of cookie. And then we're just going to take it and kind of push it together a little bit like this, but we're not rolling it into a ball. And I think this is going to make about 12 cookies. And then the sad news is that they do have to freeze for about 90 minutes. We're going to bake them straight from the freezer. But do not fear, we've been here all day and we have some <laughs> waiting in the freezer for us. Yeah. And what's great about this is that you can just leave them in the freezer. If you don't want to bake all of them straight away, you can just bake them from frozen because that's what we're going to do right now. Yeah. So you've always got cookies in your freezer. Oh, <laughs> dreamy. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, that is our last cookie. We've got 12 even cookies here. Dane's gonna get those uh, wrapped in cling film and put in the freezer. And we've got our oven set to 180 degrees C with a fan, and that's hotter than normal because we wanna get that nice crispy outside shell that keep them gooey in the middle. And we've also got a baking sheet in there heating, which is a tip we kind of found out through trial and error. Um, and it's really great because that's hot, so it's gonna get the bottom of your cookies nice and crispy as well. So our oven has got to temperature, the baking tray is really, really hot, so I'm going to pull this out really carefully and Dane's going to plop on six cookies, really well spaced out because uh, they will spread. <laughs> so you don't want to end up with cookies, they're all stuck together. Okay, and then they're going to go in for 17 minutes and the outside will be a little bit golden um, and the inside will be nice and gooey. They're out of the oven and they've cooled down for about... About five minutes? Yeah, yeah, which has sort of let them get the heat off, but they're still nice and warm, which is the best way to eat cookies. Yes. Um, they've gone nice and golden, they've still kept their nice chunky shape, and the bottom of them is nice and cooked and golden too, and that's because we put them on the hot um, baking sheet that was already in the oven. Yeah. So... Let's dig in. Let's dig in. Yeah. Okay, let's see what they look like inside. Ready? Three, two, one. Look at these, Sally. Oh, they they're are perfect. So good. <laughs> they are just the half baked, gooey goodness inside that we were looking for. And they've still got that crispy shell on the outside, too, so you get yeah. the crunch and then the goo. Exactly. And if you make these, be sure to Instagram them and use the hashtag CupcakeGemma so we can see all of your posts. Absolutely. And um, if you're wondering what to buy yourself or ask someone else for Christmas, don't forget that we have all our lovely Cupcake Gemma merchandise, like these lovely oven gloves on cupcakegemma.com. Yeah. They really are genuinely like amazing. I use them at home. Me too, <laughs> perfect. Um, and she'll be back soon, and we'll take her cookies. Don't worry, she'll yeah. get some of these, maybe. I mean, we might eat these ones, but yeah. we'll bake some others. <laughs> um, I have, we have to eat these. We do. Okay, go. Mm. Good. Yes. <laughs> we did it, we did it. <laughs> <laughs>